Once upon a time, long, long ago in, hell, well, you know the rest, the absolute evil had, in the fabulous predecessor to this game, taken over the entire overworld with its creatures. Now it spent its time on debauched parties and, wait a minute, the entire overworld? No! One small village of indomitable heroes still held out against the invaders. The unamused evil was beside itself with rage. But all this was about to change once and for all, because the remote control evil sent its most vicious general into the field, the Dark Elf Talia. Talia, also known from the fabulous predecessor, came back from her vacation in a thoroughly good mood. Before that, she had defeated her foster father, the paladin Thanos. This fact is important to note. For this last remaining village of heroes was protected by none other than Tristan, foster son of Thanos and Talia's stepbrother. This proud warrior in shining, his handsome heroic chest, accentuating armor, was the last glimmer of hope for the forces of good. Talia, who had fully embraced the dark side, couldn't wait to really kick her stepbrother's ass. And so our story begins. The last defenders of good were fighting for their survival. This seemed to be the perfect time for Tristan to make his appearance. The last mighty hero of the good races. My brothers! In your eyes, I see the same fear that would lead me to despair. The day may come when the courage of true heroes is extinguished, when we abandon our companions and all bonds of friendship are broken. But that day is still far off. Stand fast, heroes of the West! And with those familiar sounding words, Tristan charged into battle to the cheers of his men. The heroes of good had managed to capture some of the evil creatures. Nevertheless, it was more than questionable whether a few minor victories and a brilliant speech could do anything against the absolute evil's armies. A storm of darkness and gloom descended, heralding the arrival of Talia, the absolute evil's general. This entrance not only panicked the defenders of good, but also seemed to strengthen the creatures of evil. Pick a little hero, but forward, creatures! Show me what you can do! Punch them, smack dab in the mouth, smash them in the face! Oh, and just as a precaution, get me my handbook of worn-out third-rate catchphrases. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! If my eyes don't deceive me, that's my stupid stepbrother Tristan over there, too, just waiting for me to lovingly put his head on a spear. Ha! Today is gonna be a good day. Talia seemed to be very sure of victory. Some might find this puzzling, as it was the beginning of a long new campaign. But okay, maybe the rest of the missions are nothing but a string of debauched victory celebrations. Who knows? Talia! This isn't the end! We'll meet again! With these words, Tristan quickly created a portal and threw himself through it with the last of his strength. The portal closed again behind him. Treachery! Fraud! Cheater! This was supposed to be my victory! And what the hell kind of glove is that anyway? Looks to me like game design forgot to balance the thing properly. Maybe the people in charge were still too captivated by your great speech brought tears to my eyes, too. However, not of emotion. <laughs> As if the bird brains these evil creatures have needed grand speeches. A few skulls to bash in, and the social calendar for the evening is full. Well, each to their own. <clears throat> but apparently, Tristan had suffered a mishap as the aforementioned magic glove still lay in the place where it was last used. 
it would seem that he had accidentally lost it. Ha! <laughs> Wonderful! This thing is just what I need. Tray chic. I'll, um, just grab that right away. And so our story begins. Tristan had managed to give Tanya the slip, but she had been able to capture his magic glove. The Gauntlet of Finichu, a fabled artist. Unfortunately, UI overlays don't work in cutscenes, so Tanya couldn't read just exactly what the glove did. Nevertheless, she proudly presented it to the absolute evil in its form as the Donald. And so misfortune took its course, because at the same time, Tanya wanted to demonstrate how loudly she could snap her fingers. But this snap, which would go down in the history books as the Dungeon Lord Snap, unleashed horrific forces that were discharged into the Dungeon Lord himself. As Tanya rose to her feet, the gauntlet had disappeared and the Dungeon Lord lay dying. Viewers often began to cry at this point because it made them think back to the last really good superhero movie. Talia mourned for about five seconds. Talia had shattered the realms of good and served them onto the absolute evil on a silver platter, while it had actually done nothing at all. So Talia now became the absolute ruler. She had no clue about how to rule, but more than made up for it with hubris and consistently ignoring glaring problems. In addition, she surrounded herself with a staff of incompetent advisors. What could possibly go wrong? Ten minutes later, Tristan had captured Tanya, locked her in a cage, and put the armies of absolute evil to flight. And so the story ends. We'll tell you how the story continues in overpriced microtransaction bites. Oh, wait, wait, wrong script. That's a different developer. Hang in there, I've almost got it. While Tanya was ignominiously taken away, the unused essence of absolute evil continued to float through the ether. It wasn't about to admit defeat that easily, but for evil to triumph once again, it needed Tanya back, for better or for worse. And so the swirling essence of absolute evil set about commanding the perplexed-looking chaotic hordes and freeing Talia. Tristan! Let me out of this damned cage, you stupid little good elf. Otherwise, I'll have a hard time wringing your scrawny neck. What the hell do you want from me anyway? Talia, stepsister, your deplorable deeds must not go unpunished. You have slain our foster father, Thanos, a blasphemous affront to our goddess, whom you, to top it all off, have also slain. But we will have plenty of time to argue on our journey. I am here for the stone. Brynhild, if you please. You know you can, you little cutie. Oi! Who are you, lazy nut? Get that destroyer of worlds class hammer going. Talia had been captured. Only the bubbling around the place essence of absolute evil could save her. It was amusing to leave Talia in the clutches of her brother. But on the other hand, without her help, the shapeless evil would probably just roam the countryside as a disembodied something or other and at best be hired for third-rate horror movies. Fortunately, a forgotten dungeon heart lying in the underground could quickly be reactivated. Together with the creatures of the Horde, it would be easy to smash the do-gooder heroes there to smithereen. The Dwarven equipment spectacularly went up in flames, which was rather odd, as the creatures had only been hitting the thing with their weapons. But fine, perhaps Horde weapons were made of flint. Yet the distraction provided by the Dwarven intervention had shifted the destruction-loving evil's focus long enough for Talia and her stepbrother Tristan 
to disappear into the distance. With an imaginary sigh, the staggering evil took one last look around before setting off in pursuit. The path led to the Hellwoods, an eerie place claimed by the demonic creatures of the underground beneath the Hellwoods. Tanya's stepbrother Tristan was tampering with the remains of a dungeon long thought forgotten. But the demonic evil's henchmen were hard on his heels and were also slogging their way through the underground. Tristan had no choice but to retreat. My brothers, in your eyes I see the same fear that would lead me to despair. The day may come when the... Tristan, you good-for-nothing imbecile! Can't you just shut up for once or finally come up with a different speech? That's so... Hey, are those my armies of evil? <laughs> here, get me out of here so I can personally kick my stepbrother's butt. Go ahead, finish them off, give it to them. Push a, a, a way past the expiry date cake right in their faces. <laughs> Never! The power of magic flows through me. A magic barrier will keep those creatures at bay! It seemed that Tristan did actually have some small knowledge of magic. His barrier was impenetrable to conventional attacks. Where magic was concerned, however, things looked just a little different. The spellbook perusing evil quickly set about tackling this problem underground. The ice in its drink-loving evil's armies had defeated Tristan's pathetic defenders. Evil's creatures were filled with jubilation, but the disembodied essence of evil was not yet in the mood to celebrate, for Tristan himself had escaped and still had Tanya with him. The lingering without physical form evil pretended to sigh and once again took up a... These sequences with me in a cage are being stretched out far too long here. Can't we talk this out somehow? Uh, maybe rock scissors paper, like in the old days? Huh. You know I always go for the good old rock. Uh, but speaking of stones, I will soon have all the stones of Finichu together. And then... Nobody gives a damn about your stupid marbles, you dumbass. While Tanya was engrossed in an animated discussion with her stepbrother, the brain-eating evil was already attempting a, more or less, fruitless attempt to free her. Since undead simply resurrected somewhat later in the graveyard after their demise, an unsuccessful onslaught was no great tragedy. Admittedly, the creature-wasting evil probably never took the loss of subordinates too tragically in the first place. But back to the subject at hand. Fortunately, there were ancient mausoleums in the vicinity, which were home to powerful undead and could provide a significant supply of reinforcements. The map studying evil eagerly took notes. Ha! See that, Tristan? My armies will free me. Go on, you undead! Knock them down! Eat their brains! Uh, th 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 oh, I don't know, just do... The sovereign evil had freed Talia from the clutches of her stepbrother. Pity, really. I found it quite pleasant not to have someone constantly interrupting me. Hmm. I will ignore your insolence for now, but only because I have to deal with that damn Tristan. The step in stepbrother is going to be an architectural statement when I'm done with him. Lost in her rant, Talia had missed the fact that her stepbrother Tristan had meanwhile made a run for it. What? The cowardly, dishonest, disgusting! Talia had been rescued from the clutches of her stepbrother Tristan by the absolute <laughs> evil. This seemed a bit surprising as, after all, Talia had accidentally caused its demise only one cutscene earlier. But the disembodied essence of the irritated evil was restless due to its lack of physical form. It needed help finding a new body. In such cases, less competent personnel were also called upon. Tanya was extremely grateful to have been freed from the cage after three long missions. Finding a new body for the absolute evil seemed a small price to pay. Hi, 
High up on the fourth highest peak in the world, Mount Snotmore resided the venerable council of little snots. These wise beings were the ones who would know what would constitute a new, adequate vessel for the absolute evil. All Talia had to do was reach the peak. A trifle, really, but unfortunately, her stupid stepbrother and his oversized army stood between her and her goal. Otherwise, however, it would have been so easy that even a group of gluttonous hobbits could have managed it. Ah, oh, free at last! This traveling in a cage through the overworld really made me miss that musty, stuffy dungeon air. Hmm, what exciting scent is that rising to my nose? Is it... Okay, which one of you little snots did that? While Talia was more or less enjoying her new freedom, her stepbrother Tristan was roaming the overworld with his entourage. The next stone was bound to be around here somewhere, but uh, I'm having a hard time finding my way around this foul place. Men, we will set up camp here and drive the darkness from this place. Tristan, again? Oh, I've really seen about enough of these relatives lately. It feels like Thanksgiving and Christmas happening back to back. And then he even dares to rid the area here of its stylish greys. Just you wait. I'll make you pay for everything. But before Tanya could arrange a reunion with her stepbrother, it was urgently necessary for her to raise a powerful army. However, the underground was infested with spiders who called it their home. In addition, some particularly hard layers of stone stretched through the underground. In order to dig through these layers of stone, the research-addicted evil first had to research better tools for its little snots. But this required a fair amount of evilness. One could gain a particularly great amount of evilness by defeating a good being. Like this unicorn, for example, which, by chance, of course, and completely in tune with the context of the world, currently resided here. Hmm. Kill the unicorn for an extra portion of evilness. Sounds like a great way to start the game. It had already done here, and the cunning evil had done it. The heroes' camps lay in ruins. <laughs> you got that right, Tristan! Come on! It's like that time I turned eight, except this time you're the piñata. Tristan, where are you? In her destructive frenzy, Talia had forgotten about Tristan's somewhat precipitous departure. Right, that freaking coward. Oh, I was so busy beating the crap out of heroes that I totally missed it. <laughs> Whatever. I have to look at this ominous council of little snots anyway. <sighs> I guess my revenge will have to wait. Postponed, but not abandoned. Talia had left a trail of devastation on her way to the council of little snots. Now, only the city of Heroes Gorge stood between her and her path to the peak. <laughs> Excellent. So they call it Hero's Gorge. I think I'll rename it Hero's Grave when I'm done with it. Forward, creatures! Time to... Then, out of nowhere, Tristan appeared, just as if he were following a bad script. <laughs> a bad script would be ashamed of this crummy story. Men! This place must be protected. Stand firm and light the beacons. Oh, yes. And activate the magic tower. Hey, that's not fair. Treachery. Cheating. Powered by the mana ray from the magic tower, Hero's Gorge was now protected by a magic shield impenetrable to evil's creatures. The sharp-witted evil set to work on a plan. It had to take control of the tower. Maybe that would not only bring down the shield, but could also be used for something else. Sounds 
like a brilliant plan. Forward, creatures! Oh, don't smash that thing. Um, uh, capture it and get me the deeds to it. Oh, yes, we sure showed that. That was a nice little warm-up. Oh, by the way, did we manage to kill Tristan too? Is he lying around here somewhere? Talia test speared several of the dead heroes, but there was no sign of Tristan. Apparently, Talia had failed to notice that the latter had already absconded some time ago. Mm. That kind of spoils the joy of victory for me, I've got to admit. Of course, this is only the sixth mission. It would probably be a bit too much to ask if the whole thing with Tristan was over now. <laughs> I could definitely drag out his demise, let me tell you. Believe me, I can be very creative. But enough of that. It's time to finally get to that council of little snots, get a new vessel, and then finally finish off those heroes. Oi, you lazy gits! Why is that taking so long? Come on! Get off your lazy asses and bring that dynamite over here so we can get that darn artifact thing out of the ground! But the storm, my lady queen! How are we supposed to work in this storm? <clears throat> Call me lady. You can go on the dock to certainly remove my boot from your arse! That little breeze ain't no storm, you candy asses! Besides, Looking for that artifact so we can protect you, precious little cupcakes, from the wind! Now, get a move on, bring that dynamite over here, and let's get the fireworks started! While the Dwarf Queen was digging in the mountains, Talia had completed a portion of the climb to the summit. What, pray tell, do you mean portion of the climb? I just did my cardio training for the next three years. Is it just me? Or do I end up climbing some peak in every damn part of this series? Important things seem to have a penchant for hiding in remote places. And the Council of Little Snots was no exception. Talia had to reach the mountain peak. The Council of Little Snots could be found there. She would have to gain access to it via the Twisted Cave system. For this reason, and of course because of the many heroes who kept appearing, it was imperative for her to build a dungeon here. <sighs> okay, good idea. And I can take a short breather. Okay, creatures, you're up. Dig tunnels, find dwarves, and uh, pull out their beards. But actually... <gasps> <sighs> Finally, I've reached the thrice damned mountain top. But next time, I'll have my creatures build a cable car instead of climbing something like this again. Of course, you could always try to quit smoking and drinking and do more for your fitness. Just a suggestion. Personally, it helped me a lot. And now that I'm training for marathons, I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for your little prep talk. Could you please write your well-intentioned advice on a piece of paper so I can make a paper airplane out of it? Hmm. Ungrateful wretch. <clears throat> Be that as it may, Tanya had actually made it to the top. And there, however, all that awaited her was an inconspicuous stone gate. Uh, that's less than impressive. <sighs> Can't it glow or something? Is the battery dead? Maybe I should smack it with the flat of my hand. Tanya was obviously intellectually out of her depth, trying to decipher this riddle. All she had to do was utter the secret formula. Flattery Dutch. Flattery Dutch. Flattery Dirk. Flattery Dirk? Well, that didn't work. That didn't. <laughs> uh, very funny. Hilarious. They should give you your own TV show for your jokes, you comedian. Yes, thank you. I am waiting for offers. My agent will get in touch. In the meantime, you might want to just press that little button on the side so we can finally get back to business. <laughs> Stupid button. Stupid narrator, stupid council of little sn- Tanya had finally reached the venerable council of little snots, high upon Mount Snotmore. <laughs> These wisest of the wise gathered together 
and Talia asked them the most pressing question weighing on her mind. Would she herself one day sit on a throne as a ruler? Would she hold the strings of power in a fifth installment of the Dungeon series? Would the overpaid narrator finally shut his mouth? Wait a minute! Talia's stupid questions simply bounced off the wise little snots. The most important question in the room, and for this story, was that of a new vessel for the absolute evil. <laughs> the wise little snots deliberated. When they finally stepped in front of Talia again, who still hung on to her naive dreams, mumbling, and unlike me has only been with us for two installments, the leader of the little snots held a bundle in its hands. Inside this bundle was a cute, cuddly, never-before-seen baby little snot. It's crazy the ideas they keep coming up with. The little snot named Gorgu had to absorb the essence of absolute evil in order to serve as an adequate substitute. But apparently the little diaper butt was not yet strong enough to absorb all of the required essence. Talia would first have to train and strengthen Gorgu before it could fully absorb the power of the absolute evil. ...had returned safely from the Council of Little Snots. And she was not alone, but also had Gorgu in tow, a being that would soon become the new absolute evil. In his honor, the Little Snots had already built him his own room. Hmm. A room with three entrances seems a lot like a death trap to me. You don't do it yourself. But okay, enough of that. Babysitting this thing is really not my, well, thing. And anyway, it's cliche as hell that the main female character here is supposed to take care of a baby. What's next? Cooking someone dinner? Well... You're not serious, are you? In order for Gorgu to get stronger, he needed to be fed. But it was not overpriced food in jars he craved, but something with more substance. Heroes. Living heroes. As luck would have it, a few of the resident dwarves had just apprehended some thieves. Presumably, Gorgu would find them just as tasty as normal heroes if the jailbreak planning evil were to get his hands on them. Okay, I can kind of get on board with that after all. Okay, catch heroes and feed them to Gorgu. Coming right up. As if on cue, Tristan chose that very moment to appear on the scene. Talia, why are you here? Have you still not renounced evil? I have other matters to attend to. Men, seize them. Come on, men. Get yourselves together and finally put an end to that thing. Gorgu let out a deafening, satisfied belch that sent the remaining heroes fleeing. <laughs> Getting the absolute evil back on its feet was a lot easier than I thought. As I see it, the campaign won't be needing the promised 20 levels, but can actually end after the next map. Wonderful. Then I can treat myself to a nice, relaxing bath in unicorn blood. Tanya seemed very certain of victory, perhaps too certain of victory. It was negligent to believe that this story would already come to an end after such a brief inter- Tanya had been busy feeding Gorgu. Her stepbrother, Tristan, had been pursuing his own plans. The time is almost here. The Gauntlet of Finitude is reunited and the absolute evil destroyed. Now I can pursue my second objective. Tristan, hey, you're not quite up to speed. The absolute evil is back. It's in this little nipper here now, and when it's gathered enough power, it's gonna wipe the floor with you and your henchmen. <laughs> That's good to know, stepsister. Men, that cannot be allowed to happen. Wipe out the dungeon and make sure I'm not disturbed. 
What? Wait a minute. I'm not even ready yet. Treachery. Fraud. Cheater. Go get them, Gorgu. Smash them. Stop them. Pull out their nose hair. Effortlessly, Dungeon Lord Gorgu set about fending off the attacking heroes. Now, in a comic book, you might imagine copious speech bubbles at this point containing expressions like crash, pow, bam, and the like. <laughs> that was fun. But I think we need to replenish some evilness for Gorgu before the next round starts. Time to build a dungeon and crush Tristan's plan to dust. With those impressive words, Tanya set about building a dungeon to stop her stepbrother Tristan from doing whatever it was he was doing. Would she manage to do so? Probably not. After all, this was only Mission 9, but it kept things exciting. Don't get ahead of yourself. The rest of the missions will probably only deal with our extravagant victory celebration. Forward! The time had come. Talia and the absolute evil or its armies had finally reached Tristan. Tristan! Finally, we stand face to face. Time to end this storyline and leave my painful childhood behind me. Your painful childhood? Did you have a big sister who often mistreated you too? Hm. I was mistreated, so it was only right that some of it came your way too. And anyway, we're siblings, but we don't need to get into that. Your plan has failed, whatever you were going to do here. Surrender, and I'll let you live and parade you around in a cage. My plan didn't fail. Behold! and used the gauntlet's power. However, unlike Talia, he did not snap, but instead did a reverse snap. Instead of releasing horrific forces like the so-called Dungeon Lord Snap, this in fact did the opposite. Healing forces swept over the land. Heroes who had once been slain were suddenly alive again. Likewise, Tenos, Talia's and Tristan's foster father. While Tristan was overjoyed at the return of his beloved father, Talia's joy was considerably more limited, and the old rage bubbled up inside her once again. Heroes, on the other hand, were of course in a celebratory mood. A great reunion feast was arranged. Thanos was once again among the living. Should one have seen this coming? Well, presumably, because with a name like that, it was probably inevitable that he would pop up again. <sighs> In honor of Thanos and all the other people who had been resurrected, a great feast was proclaimed in the Cathedral of Light. How do you feel, Father? Are you well? Of course, son. Ha! How could I not be well now that I am finally back among the living? I am so eternally grateful to you, my boy. Let's celebrate together with our victory over darkness. So be it, Father. I have ordered one of my strongest warriors to guard the impregnable gates to the city. Nothing will come through them to disturb our celebrations. Go forth, Hordor. Show us what you can do. Hordor, Hordor. <sighs> My idiot brother has gone and resurrected our even more idiotic foster father and, just for fun, all the heroes I killed in the previous part. Oh, oh, well, at least now there's something to do. Forward, orcs! 
Time to blow up that party. But the absolute evil's creatures were unable to take these gates. Probably not even a dragon mother or a mother of dragons would have been able to tear them down. Ugh, total bummer, Nambi pamby little pack of orcs. But hey, fine. I'll just find some other way to blow up that party. After all the time Talia had spent talking about blowing up, it was inevitable that she would be hit by a flash of inspiration. Beneath the Cathedral of Light, there was an ancient, long-forgotten cellar. If this were filled with explosive material, it would probably lead to a dynamite buzz for the partygoers. <laughs> Everyone stop. I just had a flash of inspiration. If we stack some blaze beer under the cathedral, we can blow the damn place up along with Thanos. <laughs> I am so brilliant. Forward, little snots, gather hops and malt, and let's get this party started. Fine dust in different evil had ignited a fulminant display of fireworks. The Cathedral of Light was now just a smoking crater, as was much of the city surrounding it. A large number of the heroes who had just celebrated their resurrection suddenly found themselves piles of ashes. <laughs> that was a great celebration. I like making an entrance with a bang. Yoo-hoo, Father, are you still there? Are you that sad little pile of ashes over there? <laughs> Good. Good. Can I just sit out on my balcony and drink wine for the rest of the game? But the news of Thanos' passing was premature. He and Tristan had survived the explosion. God. I knew you'd show up, but you won't get me that easily. How the hell did you guys survive that? Tristan and I were dancing on the table during the explosion. A hundred percent solid oak. Thirty percent off if you picked it up yourself. Who can say no to that? Stupid brand name merchandise, but whatever. I'm actually rather happy. Your survival means that I can now kill you again. Evil will never triumph over me. Well, at least not twice. Die, Ta Thanos and his foster daughter Talia once again faced each other in a merciless battle. Thanos had rounded up the last of his allies to resolve the battle once and for all. Father, do you really want to go that far? Talia may have lost her way, but... In the end, surely we can still talk to her and come to an agreement. Son, I am impressed with how much you still believe in the good in your stepsister. But the time for talking is over. Talia was able to get me once through my goodness. That won't happen to me a second time. The Gauntlet of Finitude gives us a chance to beat Talia. Rise, men! It is time once again to enter the service of good and incinerate evil once and for all in the purifying fire of the light. Thanos used the gauntlet's power to revive the heroes once again and call them back from death. They rose from their graves and marched towards the dungeon as Thanos commanded. Onward! You noble warriors, receive the blessing of the blazing flame and bring doom upon my foster daughter. <laughs> As if a few old heroes from the last century would still have anything to say about that. The traps are trained and the creatures polished. Or the other way around. Whatever. Time to die, old man. The insidious evil's traps performed admirably. It was certainly an excellent idea to increase their number. Thanos was protected by the gauntlet of Finitude's power, but Talia knew that its power was limited. Hmm. 
then we have no choice but to wait until Thanos runs out of juice before we can take care of him. But then, at least I have time to choose a beautiful new spear to stick his head on this time. Talia, you depraved creature. I curse the day I welcomed you into my home. Talia and the graveyard-keeping evil had seriously thwarted Thanos' plans. Yet the Dwarf Queen Brynhild still stood at Thanos' side. Oi, that's right. And it's about time we got out of here. Go, Thanos. The thing with the Dark Elf brat will have to wait until later. What? Hold it. Y you still have a nice date with a spear waiting for you here. Not today, Talia. I just need a little more of that power, that evilness, to charge the gauntlet. Only then can I destroy you and enable good to triumph. Damn. Paladins with their stupid, stupid portals. <sighs> All right, creatures, swing those hooves, get the lead out, and get after Tannis at a gallop. Forward! And so, together with the pursuing evil, Talia set out in pursuit of Tannis. It is tragic that this place of good must be destroyed, but I need the resulting evilness to charge the gauntlet. That is the only way I can destroy the absolute evil! Thanos had obviously misplaced a few of his marbles. He marauded through the countryside, committing evil deeds in order to strengthen the good. I totally have this deja vu thing. Very strong third part vibes. But fine, I I've got the spear for his head ready now. And this time, it's got freaking bars. Nevertheless, the absolute evil had to react. A Thanos charged with evilness was a terrible opponent. For the good of the world, he had to be slowed and stopped. So now, we're trying to steal the evilness from right under his nose? Yes, that's the way it looks. Oh, hell yes, count me in. So we do what bad guys do, and we stick it to my crazy foster father in the process. Surely something useful could be done with the evilness later on. But first, Talia had to act faster than Thanos. Okay, let's get out there and start doing evil deeds. So we can stop my now evil foster father from doing evil deeds. For evil! Or for the good? Oh. Mm. Somehow, I kind of lost the plot there somewhere. Forward! We did it! I did it. That should be enough evilness to feed Gorgu. So, little baby, eat up all that tasty evilness. Enriched by all this energy, Gorgu once again became the Dungeon Lord. In this form, he could take on Tannis' undead. At least, that's what Talia and the really thinking plan through evil thought. Uh, what's with all the pessimism? Dungeon Lord Gorgu will thoroughly kick Thanos' butt, and then that barbed spear I mentioned earlier comes into... ...had ingested enough evilness to remain in the guise of the Dungeon Lord for an extended period of time. But Thanos was also able to strengthen himself somewhat. Both opponents now faced one another in an implacable duel. Imagine here some quick camera cuts to the grim faces of the two opponents, like the ones you used to see in the anime series of your youth. The stare-down could fill out several volumes all by itself, but just for you, we've condensed that down to one line of dialogue. Then the two opponents began to throw wildly powerful missiles at each other's ears. But such an epic battle, with unusual attacks and such, took its toll, and both sides retreated for a short breather. Men, despair not. It is time to prepare for the final battle. Fight at my side. Together, we will destroy evil once and for all! This rousing speech, together with the threat of beatings in the case of non-compliance, served to mobilize Thanos' reaming heroes. It would certainly make sense for Talia to support Gorgu as well. Really? 
I thought Gorgu would make short work of Thanos now. After all the stress of the previous mission. Hmm. Is someone trying to grind out a little extra game time? But hey, fine. Don't let anyone say I let evil down. I'll throw wave after wave of my creatures at Thanos if I have to. Up you get, you lazy bums. Pick yourselves up. Build a dungeon, raise an army, and severely rearrange Thanos' teeth. This can't be true. Good must triumph. <laughs> Take that, old man. At first, I thought it was stupid of Tristan to resurrect you, but I've reconsidered. You are such a crazy frickin' scumbag that you really do deserve to die twice for this. But with the last of his strength, Thanos managed to use the Gauntlet of Finitude. What happened next is so blatant that we have to show it in a cutscene. The battle between Thanos and Dungeon Lord Gorgu raged. Both opponents assumed their best anime fighting poses, sized up their opponent, and then exchanged blows, magic missiles, and or telepathic insults. But even though the fight dragged on due to Gorgu's inexperience, the end was predestined. Thanos was forced further and further into the defensive. In his distress, Thanos saw himself with only one remaining option. He took the stones of finitude and stuffed them into his mouth. Thanos was bathed in an unnatural light, with flames rising from his eyes. He grew and grew as his muscles swelled and his body deformed. This discharge hurled the stones of finitude away yet again and scattered them in all directions. In his new form, Thanos was now significantly stronger than the inexperienced Gorgon. And with one mighty blow, the mutation hurled the dungeon lord in training to the side. Then the creature turned towards Tarn. Its eyes began to flash. Destructive laser beams, yes, that's really what it says here, shot out of its eyes toward the dark elf to destroy him. But this was the moment for heroes, and so Tristan pushed his stepsister Talia aside, out of the line of fire. So now, instead of Talia, Tristan was scorched by Thanos' laser eyes. Talia had no time to check on her stepbrother, but fled as fast as she could. Thanos had fully unleashed the gauntlet's power transforming into a giant monster that was definitely not green for trademark reasons. High energy light shot from his eyes, melting everything in its path. Ah, the goddess of light has blessed me. The cleansing light of my eyes will burn all evil from the face of the earth. How many times? She can't bless anyone anymore! And even under the earth you are not safe, you despicable creatures. Thanos' laser eyes carved a hole in the ground that stretched down into the depths of the dungeon. If these lasers were to hit the dungeon heart, it would be the end of the absolute evil. Meanwhile, in the underground, Talia had other things she considered important. Yeah, 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 I know. You're gonna make some hackneyed crack about women and mirrors now, you miserable chauvinist. The fact is, that thing gives me a really... The laser eyes were leaving a trail of devastation through the dungeon. 
but in the middle of their path, by pure chance, of course, stood Talia's mirror. Ah, what devilry! Talia, you vile thing! You are truly the most evil spawn that ever existed! Last wait until my eyes have recovered, then my cleansing gaze will burn you to ashes! That Thanos is such a miserable jerk. He doesn't even notice when he puts himself out of action. Ugh, I mean, that was my ingenious plan all along, of course. Unfortunately, my mirror also broke in the process. Where am I going to get a new one now? Talia and the Absolute Evil had nothing to counter Thanos' gigantic laser eyes at the moment. Both agreed that a strategic withdrawal from these lands was the wisest choice for the time being. So, well, if that's what the narrator says, then that's probably what happened, right? But fine, for now it probably really makes sense to get the hell out of Dodge. Forward, creatures, line up in rows of two. Hold the creature next to you by the hand and then run away in pad Absolute evil had finally reached the evacuation point for their tactical retreat. Phew, that was really something. We urgently need a way to stop Thanos again. I still have that sharp pointed spear just pining for Thanos' head. To be able to stop Thanos again, it would probably be necessary to reassemble the gauntlet of finitude. However, the stones that filled the gauntlet were scattered in all directions. It would take some time to round them all up. Of course, nothing in this stupid dungeon series is ever easy. Any sensible person would think to themselves, boom, let's just beat the crap out of him and that's it. But no, I have to go through the countryside and collect some stupid stones. Oh. Okay, fine. Let's get this over with so I can get back to the point where I put Thanos' head on a spit. Talia and the Gasping Evil had narrowly escaped Thanos, but it was only a matter of time before the latter would track them down. It was therefore imperative that they reassemble the Gauntlet of Finitude in order to be able to face Thanos. By a stroke of luck, three of the stones appeared to be nearby. Three stones, because all good things come in threes. <laughs> How subtle. But fine with me. Then we'll have this chapter behind us in no time. Shouldn't be a problem. But fate sometimes plays its little games. So it was not surprising that another party was also looking for the stones. Oi! Get a move on, lads! Get the drill ready! We need to find those stones before the Dark Elf Wench shows up. Oh, uh, her again? I thought we took care of her about ten levels ago. But hey... Kicking some of those damn dwarves in the butt every now and then is refreshing, too. It was doubtful how successful the dwarves' digging would be, but there was no question that the drill would cause havoc in the dungeon. It would very likely wake up unwelcome critters sleeping in the underground. But the walkthrough studying evil's real target were the three stones of finitude. These had to be captured before the dwarves managed to do so. Okay, all right, I can work that all in. And by that, I mean I'll put the little snots and the creatures to work. Get a move on, you lazy bums! Ha! I finally found all of the dragon but I mean, hawk oh, oh, hogwash. Stones of finitude! So now, I've got it! With all this searching, you kind of lose track of the big picture. Oi! Those are my stones, lass! I need them to support Thanos! Give them to me! Like hell! They're all mine. Now, I'm going to get the others too, and you're going to look stupid as hell. Meanwhile, you just keep playing with your stupid nose picker or whatever that thing is supposed to be. With these uplifting words, Talia made a hasty exit in search of the next stone of finiture. Oh, nice volcano. Great view. Makes you feel right at home. What's this thing called again? Doom Hill? Hmm. Kind of disappointing. Not enough for a mountain. While Tanya was admiring the surroundings, the fourth stone of finitude was nearby, in the middle of an enchanting clearing. Wow, that's just too easy. Oh, crap. You 
can't say something like that. Indeed, out of nowhere, mysterious beings appeared and broke the stone into three fragments, which they then carried away just to make things interesting. Great. I just had to say it. Okay, 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 it's my fault. Hopefully, we can put that thing back together. I'm sure I still have a tube of all-purpose glue lying around here somewhere. The fire of Doomhill's volcano could be used to fuse the stone fragments back into one. But in order to do so, the strange stone robbers would have to be defeated. All right. We know a thing or two about busting things up. Onward, creatures. Smash those crystal beasts. Collect the fragments and paint moustaches on their faces. Uh, wait. I mean... Take them to the volcano! The crazed evil had done it. All the stone fragments were now in their possession. Great! Now let's melt this mother down and make ourselves a fancy stone. My precious. Or better said, my stone. Those were my first words after the doctor took out my gallstones. But we digress. Tanya and the rock-collecting evil had captured the fourth stone of finitude. Now they only had to find one more stone before they could reassemble the gauntlet of finitude. Ah, uh, time to get my wee machine going here and get me that last trinket before that dark elf last grabs it. That stupid dwarf again. This is slowly turning into a running non-gag. <sighs> But okay, let's cut it short. These incredibly long intro and outro sequences are gonna drive people crazy. Narrator, what do I have to do? Uh, now that's such a direct question. <laughs> Talia had to reach the Stone of Finitude before the Dwarf Queen could grab it. The latter had procured a modern mining machine. Oi! What's wrong now? What's wrong with the damn thing now? Hello? Maintenance? The drill isn't working. What? Yeah, I already tried turning it off and on you jokers. Oh, wait a minute. I was wrong. It was just the plug that was loose. Someone must have unplugged it while cleaning. Okay, not another word about it. Let's move on. Well, you see, the dwarves had a powerful drill. Now, where were we? Okay, all right. I think I know what to do. We dig out the stone. Consider it done. Hmm, I'm getting the feeling you're out to take my job right now. Let's go, creatures. Get those pickaxes ready. Dig your way to the stone and refill my cocktail glass. There we have it. Finally, I have seen all seven dragon bo... Nonsense. Five infinity sto... Stones of finitude. We don't want to get sued again. <laughs> anyway, Talia and the Happy Evil now had all five stones of finitude. This brought them one big colossal step closer to Tenos's destruction. Exactly. Now we just quickly insert them into the gauntlet and then we can get this show started. Uh, somehow I lost the spear I was going to put Tenos's head on along the way. Oh well but I think I'll just make a new one. How did I get here? What are we doing here? I thought we were just going to put the stones in the gauntlet. Talia and the stone-snatching evil had all five stones of finitude together. For these to be mounted into the gauntlet of finitude, they would first have to be inserted into the ritual rune sockets of finitude. What? What's this bullshit? Tristan just inserted the damn things into the gauntlet? No, you just didn't see that sequence. It happened off screen. The hell he did? I watched him do it myself. Oh, okay, I suppose there's no way I can get out of this. And did I hear you correctly earlier when you said part one? <laughs> Each of the stones had to be taken to its corresponding rune socket. Talia and the not getting wound up about artificially prolonged game time evil set to work. Oh, well, I'm sure as hell pissed off about this lousy plot twist. It almost looks like someone wanted to get a few more levels in just because there were 20 missions in Dungeons 3. And now, 
Just because someone is afraid of a few bad reviews, I have to put in an extra shift. Well, thanks a lot, you out there. But hey, what the hell? Let's get going. Show the gormless developers that we can jump through a few extra hoops on top of everything else. Onward, creatures. Find those rune sockets. Get the normal stones, the non-rune stones there. And let's finally put this freaky thing to bed. Fifth stone was placed in the corresponding rune socket. The ritual could begin. I now wasted so much time dragging these damn stones around everywhere. No! Naturally, this nonsense is just going to keep going on forever! Let me guess what the next mission's about. Well, of course, it could well be that there were heroes who would try to disrupt the ritual. A certain dwarf queen somehow comes to mind. Oh, of course, that makes sense. If you have to buy yourself some more game time somewhere, then you might as well do it right. The keyboard torturing hack cobbling this story together better hope I never get my hat. Oh, okay. So now we've wasted time putting the stones of finitude into the rune sockets of finitude. So what's next? Move the rune socket somewhere and use them to form the stone circle of finitude. Talia could hardly wait to embark on the ritual and infuse the stones with power. But in fact, just saying the secret magic word, Xylopilo, was enough to start the ritual. Yeah, sure. I say Xylopilo, and then you'll say something stupid, like in that previous mission, the Ascent, with the flavory dicks or whatever it was. And so Talia set the ritual in motion. Hey, wait a minute. What the hell? I'm not even prepared yet. My dungeon from the previous map suddenly disappeared. I'm starting from scratch here. Talia was not yet fully aware of the consequences of the ritual. She probably thought she would be charging the gauntlet of finitude, but in fact, the genius evil was following a different plan. I beg your pardon? Why am I only being told this now? And this genius evil you're talking about, that little rug rat over there, fervently stuffing a booger in his mouth. If you wouldn't keep interrupting me, these long intro sequences would be much shorter. Look, it's quite simple. Take good care of the stones so they don't get broken. Unfortunately, someone has also informed the dwarf green Brynhild that you are here and she is now on her way to you. Probably one of those blabbermouth developers for suspense and stuff. Forward, creatures! Make ready! Build traps and rooms and bring me more sharpened spears for my meeting with those damn developers. Talia and the planning evil have completed the ritual. Finally! Finally! Man, that crap took forever. And why the hell did we perform that stupid ritual? Well, first off, the ritual site still needs to be cleaned, but we'll get onto that in part three of this mission. Part three? Are you freaking serious? Just kidding, the ritual is over. Wow, you're really dancing on a volcano. You know that? My sense of humor has now left the building. Okay, but what has this ritual brought us? <sighs> The witty evil's plan had come to full fruition. A huge, powerful field of energy arose between the rune sockets. A powerful weapon, capable of destroying even a being charged by the stones of finitude, such as the mutated Thanos. Oh, I get it now. So we've set up a giant energy trap for Thanos, and now all we have to do is shove him into it. Huh. Not a bad plan at all. Better than what I would have expected from those kitsch scribblers. Okay then, off to the final battle! That spear for Thanos' head is still frightfully lonely. Talia, you vile creature. I will tear you and your wretched master to pieces! In the meantime, Thanos had arrived on the battlefield and immediately pounced on Gorgu, who had once again transformed into the Dungeon Lord. 
Excellent! Then Thanos is exactly where we want him to be. Now we just have to push him into the energy field. Hmm. Although, I wonder what that back there is. The magic of the rune sockets of finitude was treacherous. These had created not one, but two energy fields. Okay, I get the picture. Either we slowly push Thanos into the energy field and we win, or he pushes Gorgu into the energy field and we have a problem. Well done. I see after two games and numerous DLCs, you're getting the hang of it. Yes, yes. Oh, it's all so repetitive. We support Borgu with troops near him so that he can push Thanos back. And it works the same way in reverse. Forward, creatures! Support Gorgu in his fight against evil masquerading as good. Crush Thanos' supporters and push Thanos back to hell where he belongs. Better. Oh, come on, Gorgu. Do something, you dopey giant baby. Despair not, sister. I have come here to stop Thanos and clean up the mess I have made. Tristan? You? Here? Didn't I see you die earlier? Sister, you must have noticed by now that you have to make a real effort to make sure that the members of this family are really dead. How many times you alone have died in the course of this campaign? <laughs> uh, anyway, I need to get some rest. This whole scenario with evil fighting against evil is still very... stressful. <laughs> you think that is it? Evil will never triumph, at least not again. Forward, or be faithful to me! I listened and now I know what to do. Shut that abomination! Into the energy field! Damn, I should have kept my mouth shut. Oh, come on, creatures! Support Gorgu! Beat up heroes! Bring us victory! <laughs> and thus began the final battle. No, this cannot be. I cannot be defeated! Well, I mean, not again! With these illustrious words, Thanos bid farewell once and for all. <laughs> Unnatural forces, impossible to depict with our budget, wafted around. The air shimmered with energy and the smell of molten iron and burnt pizza. Wait, my pizza! I'll be right back. So sorry, I hope that didn't affect the finale in any way. Now, where were they? Wafting powers, shimmering air, disgusting taste. Oh, here. With their combined forces, Dungeon Lord Gorgu, Talia, and Tristan were able to push the mutated Thanos back. Onward, ever onward, in the direction of the ruined sockets of Finitude. The mutated Thanos fought for every inch of ground he lost. As he finally stood with his back to the wound sockets of Finitude, he sputtered with the last of his strength. Evil is going to triumph over God again! This is madness! This is... John John! Tyler shouted at him and sent him into the void with a spectacular kick. When the magic fog came, Thanos was no more. On the one hand, Talia was saddened, having grown accustomed to putting enemies' heads on spears. But still, Talia's joy was so great that she even danced with a nasty little snot and twirled around. Was this the end? Well, hardly, as there were still some loose ends. What became of Tristan, who seemed to disappear after Tanis' defeat? Would he raise another army of good?
What was Brynhild, the Dwarf Queen, planning? Had she created a doomsday machine? Or even found some rare knife thrill in the underground, capable of curing the elf's strange disease? Maybe that was something she should discuss with her good friend, Helbert. And was the Council of Little Snots really just a cheap reference to a council of lightsaber wielders, or was there more to those deceptive fellows? Had they helped the absolute evil out of loyalty or the goodness of their hearts? But all these questions were for another day, or installment of the series. Now, it was time to celebrate.